Welcome to all sins and commandments alike. This is Griever, your guys' host as always, bringing you guys the latest episode, episode 19 of Dragon's Judgment. Seven Deadly Sins, final season. Let's get going. And that's no Taizai. You know what? One of the big things I want to talk about right now is that last episode, fire. Best episode, like literal fire. Like literally, pun intended and all that jazz. But... This episode, a worthy, a worthy sequel episode. I am shocked. I am surprised. Yeah, was it as greatly animated? No, but it wasn't poorly animated. For most of the animation, it was fine. There was a couple of okay shots, but for the most part, this was a, was a worthy sequel episode. And it's not even bringing up the moment, the moment that needs to have all the budget poured into it. So, so, let's talk about this episode, though, because... The opening part of the episode was absolutely fantastic, you know? We just found out Escanor is now going to burn away the rest of his remaining life force to sustain the one. And because Escanor is Escanor, of course, he's a badass, that transformed the one to its highest state of being, the one ultimate or the ultimate one. The one was only sustained for one minute, burning off of sunshine. But now that he's pouring his own life, his own power into it, that we never, we we never find out. We never find out why Sunshine chose Escanor, the weak human. Why? What? What was so special? Why didn't that rip his body apart just trying to take it in in the first place? But here we do see, we do see the basically the height of his power. This is as strong as Escanor was ever going to get, as more, as powerful as he was ever going to be, and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a goddamn god? I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. And not only going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, kicking his ass. Kicking his ass. The episode starts off from the end of the last one, where he punches through, you know, the de like uh, Demon King punched through Escanor's stomach, and then he literally flexes. Like, you've seen um, Nux talk who talk about, like, flexes in anime and stuff. No, no, no. This is the ultimate flex. This is the combination of a flex because it's both a flex, metaphorically, but also physical flex. He flexes his flex. I don't, I, I, I've, I've seen all of Nux Taku's anime flexes and they're cool. Escanor's included in them. But this is the ultimate flex because he punches him into his abs, Escanor flexes his abs and he can't pull his, the demon king is now stuck and can't pull his fist out he literally punched him and he flexes his abs so that the, so that the demon king can't get away so then the demon king goes well well well, well shit I'll, I'll just punch you in the face and Escanor, tch, 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 tch. but a flesh wound now my turn Boom, 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 beats him down, and then eventually just the even the power of his abs don't beat the power of Escanor's fist, and he just beats his ass. So after this, we get a fantastic moment, a fantastic moment, which confirms, confirms, I forget who it was, but some people argued me from the end of the last episode review in the comments. Uh, one or two people argued, and I got these arguments, of course, during my manga review days, so I'm used to it, right? Um, some people argued that Escanor, the whole Escanor losing to Meliodas and, and my idea that, oh, he, he was out of control, Sunshine wasn't as powerful, he's much stronger now. Everybody takes Zeldris at his word that Meliodas was playing around, that he wasn't nearly strong enough, and that's why Escanor got his ass kicked. Um, in the one form back in the past episode, well, here, it literally proves you all wrong in black and white. Just saying. Just saying. I knew what I was talking about. I've read the manga. I've, I've been a part of this series since a long, a long, long time. And I, I knew this was the answer anyways. But I was just, you know, trying to play the game. Uh, because here, Escanor says, because they try to interfere. You know, the Demon King's still attacking Escanor. Meliodas spawn and uh, King get in the way. And Escanor says, you, stop. I told you I'm fighting him alone. What are you doing? You're interfering. And Meliodas says, no, no. And he stands in front of Escanor and said, what the hell do you think you're doing? You're giving up your life for this? What are you doing? What are you thinking right now? And Escanor pauses and says, move or I'll move you. And, and Meliodas says, fine, try to move me. And this is where Escanor sort of takes a step back and he says, you know, do you remember when I, my sunshine was out of control, 
I couldn't, I couldn't control my power. There was no rhyme or reason behind it, and I was just a monster. You beat me black and blue. And during the years that I spent with the Seven Deadly Sins, I began to be able to come to this point, to be able to master sunshine, to have control over this great power. And that's all thanks to you. And I swore, I swore that the life that I had once cursed and forsaken, I would never give it up with, that you saved. You saved my life. And the only thing that I'm ever going to give it up for is you, my Nakama. You, my friends. You, my comrades. The seven deadly sins. And especially Meliodas himself. This is where, the, of course, Meliodas goes to salt mode. He goes into it and they all help attack. And, and he basically says, well, if you're willing to risk your life, we're risking ours for you too. You're our comrade. You're our friend. Blah, blah, blah. It's a very nice moment. It's a very good moment. But it also, once again, for the power scaling people out there. And I'm not a huge power scaling fan. But I was right last episode. Once again, what the one and Escanor was out of control back in the day. Before Meliodas beat his ass. Before he learned to control it. Escanor could not control Sunshine. Sunshine was out of control. Didn't have as much power, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He only got stronger. You could argue Meliodas got stronger too. That's fine. But and you could argue that Meliodas was not at his 100% max power during the Escanor versus Meliodas fight in the Perfect Cube. What I'm saying is that the Escanor that lost to Meliodas back in the day when they first met, that Escanor is nowhere near the strength of the Escanor we know in the present day in the one form. I'm just that's all I was trying to say. So. We get that junction out of the way, right? Then we jump over while well, they're beating the crap out of the Demon King. Then we jump over to uh, Zelda, uh, Zelda, Gelda, uh, Zeldris, and uh, the Demon King in the spirit world. And there, there are some good moments there. There's some comedic moments between Gelda and uh, Zell. And there's also uh, some pretty badass, like, it's basically, they, they do a couple of ting, 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 ting. But pretty much it's all about the speeches, right? It's all about the, you're, I don't love you. You've never been a father to me. My older brother would never do this. He tries the illusion trick. He tries manipulating him. He tries this. He tries that. And Zell is just like, no, I've had enough. My older brother's not a liar. My older brother's fantastic brother. Like, he tried to help me, blah, blah, blah. You're the problem. You are the problem, and I'm going to kick your ass. And then he does. Then he does. And it's fantastic. We jump back to the real world. Everything's happening. Uh, Zeldris manages to kick out the Demon King, so the Ten Commandments fly away sort of idea. But the Demon King is not down and out. This was part of the problem, actually. Um, in all honesty, right here is I don't really like the direction that this took because now we've... How many times have we got to fight this damn Demon King? Like, seriously, seriously. You're not even a good villain. Like, if it was Aizen or somebody like that, or even, like, the Naruto fans love Madara or something like that, if it was a decent villain, if he was a good villain, sure, but he's not. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but this will be, like, the sixth or seventh time we fought the Demon King. And, like, in a row. There has not been any other fights. It's been the Demon King. We saw uh, Bon and Meliodas fight the Demon King in Purgatory. Then we saw uh, Meliodas fight the Demon King in the Spirit World. So that's two. Uh, we have the Bon and everybody when he took over Meliodas' body fighting the Demon King. That's number three. Then we had everybody, uh, Meliodas and Elizabeth fighting the Demon King in Zeldris' form. That's number four. Now you could argue that this is sort of the uh, second part of that fight. You could argue that that's part number four, but I argue against it. Um, when he goes into his current form, sort of idea, the form he was in in this episode, I would argue that there was one fight with Meliodas Elizabeth and the Demon King, and then there was the Seven Deadly Sins versus the Demon King. Five. That's five goddamn battles. Then Zeldris and Gelda versus the Demon King. Six. Six damn fights. Now we're on to fight number seven. Are they trying to do something fun with that? Like, the series is called non Nonsen No Taizai, Seven Deadly Sins. We're going to do seven fights at the end. Like, what? Like, is that what you're trying to do? Because as far as I'm concerned, there might as well be another dozen fights with the Demon King at this point. This dude will not stay down. He will not stay dead. And it's not gr good because it's not written well. And nor is the Demon King even a good villain. I want him to stay dead. Just stay dead. God. 
So because after he kicks out the Demon King, the Ten Commandments decide to go in the earth and all four corners sort of idea. Which, if this form is so strong, why didn't he do this from the first place? I have no idea. Once again, the Demon King has plot holes all through his plan and he makes no sense anyways. But here, now he becomes a Daedric Prince. He looks like something, a cross between Davy Jones and one of the Daedric Princes from Skyrim. That's what he looks like. He looks like, uh, is it Molag Baal or which one was, was the tentacle one? Was that uh, something that began with an M? Hera, m m m da da. whatever, whatever. Uh, the, you know, the Dragonborn one or whatever. He looks like a combination of the first Dragonborn mask guy, um, Metric or whatever his name is, Metric. Um, he looks like, he looks like David Jones. He looks like he's got like that Davy Jones sort of Tuscan like tentacle face on this big earth body sort of idea because he goes into the earth, lifts it all up. Everyone's like, oh my God, we're all doomed. Randomly, apparently, druids were always angels to begin with. Yay! Yeah? Okay. Hey? What? <laughs> yeah. Remember, remember Jenna and, and, and uh, Zanaria or whatever her name is? apparently they were goddesses the whole time. They call themselves druids. They don't have wings, but then randomly here they have wings and apparently druids were always goddesses to begin with. How that makes any sense or how that's relevant, I have no idea, but it, it, it happened. It's here. It, it doesn't matter. So I don't know why you gave us that information. It just confuses the audience, but apparently that's a thing. And, uh, yeah, there, there's some good moments in between this, though. When Zeldris does kick out uh, the, the Ten Commandments, uh, Bond ends up catching him so the Demon King can't read control the vessel. Uh, he's embarrassed when Meliodas praises him and says, You beat Dad. Great job, Zel. Great job, brother. And Zeldris, of course, you know, after talking with Gelda and stuff, is sort of embarrassed. So he just he turns into Gelda's chest and then Meliodas makes a, you know, a titty joke and stuff. Very, very Meliodas. Very, I like this dynamic. This... There was small minor positives that came out of it, out of this arc. One of the things we've been missing for a very long time is the whole, uh, the tavern aspect. I like to call it like the uh, the straw hats on the sunny, or the straw hats the straw hats screwing around. It's something that we always we don't realize that we haven't seen in a long time, and we miss it when we finally see a moment like that when we just see them. Chillaxing, just see them drinking, making jokes, having a party. Seven Deadly Sins incorporated that extremely well through the first season, and it's sort of as as the story got more serious and darker, we lost that element. And it's nice to see once in a while it slipped through the cracks and we get it back here because you know Meliodas being like, ah, you're a titty man, brother. I I understand. I understand completely. Yes, yes, yes. And Zeldris, of course, embarrassed. He was embarrassed for another reason. You know, he did, you know, blushing for praise from his older brother and stuff because they their storyline has come full circle. And he's just like, no, of course not. That's not it. And blah blah blah. So it, it's it's a fun moment. I like that moment. But uh, and then we also get, of course. Uh, we're, we're, we haven't focused on the rest of Escanor yet. Um, basically, Escanor is still go basically burning through his life, and it's too late to turn back at this point. I will talk about the problems with this um, a little later on. Uh, like, seriously, I will talk about the problems uh, with what happened um, and w how they could have been easily fixed. Like, there were just some improper pacing in the manga and in the story uh, to properly convey Escanor doing this as a, as a good idea and stuff. But right now he's burning through his life and he can't exactly flip the switch. There's no off for this. So that's still happening. But here at the end, as I said, when, when the big demon kicks all the Britannian and big bad and all, and we get shots from Hendrickson and Dreyfus and, uh, uh, Gil Thunder and uh, uh, Bartra and everybody like that, right? And everybody's like, oh my God, the world's going to end and stuff. And he's like, I see all your faces. And then the Seven Deadly Sins are all laughing. They all get a line like, uh, you know, Gotha's like, huh, bad parenting, huh? Ooh. And stuff like that. And Escanor's just standing there like, you're a fool, Demon King. And I'm just like, yeah, this is my boy. Ban, uh, bon and Meliodas, everybody's like, all right. And we get... Uh, it's, it's, it's too short ended, but a great way to end the episode. We get the shot of everybody smirking, like, we're going to kick your ass. Like, like seriously, this is your last idea? This is your last, you know, how many mulligans are you getting, Demon King? Because now we've proven we can kick your ass in your strongest forms. 
Now you're just grasping at straws, and and we got perfect time playing in the background. Great way to end the episode. Um, I have a feeling that the next episode is the episode that I'm hyped for. And after that, if it's not, it'll be episode 21. But I have a feeling it'll be episode 20. And after that, this series is going to take a very drastically horrible, horrific, one of the worst endings to a manga or story I've ever seen in my life. So, not looking forward to after episode 20, assuming episode 20 covers what I'm thinking it will. If not, episode 21, and we'll have to get to that next week. But either way, at least this episode was good. At least this episode we could enjoy. We had some of our fan favorite characters doing cool things. Bond, Meliodas, Escanor, Zeldris, all doing cool things. Um, so yeah, it was pretty good. What did you guys think of the episode, though? Like, comment, and subscribe. I... Uh, of course, I'm not going to praise this as much as the last episode, but this was a worthy sequel, and uh, it's not a bad episode. 7, 8 out of 10, something like that. Pretty damn good. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know down below. Don't forget to drink responsibly, as always, and we will see you guys back here next time. Peace out.